Kings and Generals is proud to announce that this is one of the many incredible channels that we've partnered up with for Project Ukraine. Project Ukraine is a playlist dedicated to telling the past of the Ukrainian people to aid them in the present. Your likes, shares and donations to the charity we're collaborating with will have a direct impact in aiding the most vulnerable citizens of Ukraine. We have partnered up with the Babin Yar Holocaust Memorial Center in Kyiv, which was bombed by the Russian troops at the start of the invasion. Today, the Foundation has transformed its projects, refocusing its resources and efforts on purchasing and delivering humanitarian aid to civilians and evacuating people from combat zones. In the first week of April, the center provided over 7,000 food baskets to patients and doctors at Kyiv hospitals, to bomb shelters in the Kyiv underground, as well as to people with disabilities and elderly people who cannot leave their homes. They also provided targeted assistance to 3,354 people, delivering specific medications, food and hygiene products on individual requests. We hope that viewers would consider donating to this noble cause and help with the humanitarian situation in Ukraine. Greeks are well known for their adventurous spirit since the ancient times. The area of the Black Sea, located between today's Ukraine and Turkey, has been a part of the Greek adventure for more than two millennia now. But how exactly, we will discover in today's special episode. One of the most well-known Greek mythology stories is that of Jason and the Argonauts expedition. According to the legend, the Argonauts were to retrieve the Golden Fleece, which was located in Colchis. However, when they reached Hellespont, they faced the clashing rocks. They devised a plan. With the help of a dove and hard rowing, they barely managed to pass through. In another instance, before the Greeks set off to conquer Troy, they had to sacrifice Iphigenia, but at the last minute, the goddess Artemis swapped her with a deer and sent her to the land of the Tauris. Behind every legend, there is a true story hidden. The golden riches, the fertile land and the abundant raw materials of the Black Sea or Efxinos Pondos, as the Greeks call it, intrigued them, and once they managed to cross Hellespont, the possibilities were endless. Soon, the coasts of the Black Sea were full of Greek cities, with the settlers originating mostly from Miletus and Megara. There, the Greeks prospered by trading grain and other raw materials, living side by side with Sarmatians, Scythians and local Tauri people, their relations being both synergetic and antagonistic. This area was especially crucial for the Athenians during the Peloponnesian Wars as they imported most of their grain from the Herson region. Some decades later, the Bosporan Kingdom emerged. It is considered the first truly Hellenistic state, in the sense that a mixed population adapted the Greek language and civilization. However, the Bosporan Kingdom was soon incorporated in the Kingdom of Pontus, under a very ambitious Pharnaces, the father of Mithridates VI, Eupater. After almost 25 years and three wars, the Roman general Pompey finally defeated King Mithridates and the area of the previously Bosporan Kingdom became now a client state of the Roman Republic for almost 400 years before it was incorporated in the Roman Empire all the while living in prosperity. For the next thousand years, countless raids, mostly by Turkic tribes, followed with many of the invaders eventually setting in the greater Crimea region and mixing with the local population. However, with some short interventions, the area had always significant Greco-Roman presence. After the Fourth Crusade, Crimea was transferred to the suzerainty of the Empire of Trebizond, which fell to the Ottomans in 1461, giving birth to the Principality of Theodoro, the last Roman state which survived until 1475. 
The rulers of Theodoro came by the surname of Gavras, a Byzantine family with long ancestry and descendants up to date. The Ottoman presence would not last for long, however, as the Empress Catherine the Great soon annexed Crimea in her pursuit towards Dniester. By then, Greeks had become divided into two subgroups, Tatar-speaking Urums or Greco-Tatars and Romaic Pontic Greeks with Romaica Greek as their mother tongue. However, both communities continued to be Orthodox Christians. Then, Catherine the Great decided to relocate the Greeks from Crimea to the northern shores of the Sea of Azov between today's cities of Mariupol and Donetsk. During her time, the Greek Balaklava Infantry Battalion was introduced, consisting of Crimea Greeks, which fought in three Russo-Turkish wars. Maybe one of the greatest moments of Greek history in today's Ukraine is the foundation of the Society of Friends, or Filiki Eteria, in Odessa in AD 14 by three merchants. The purpose of the society was to overthrow the Ottoman rule of Greece, something that would come into fruition almost 20 years later. Indeed, the first act of the Greek Revolution started with Alexander Ypsilandis in Valachia. The Red Revolution shook the world, and thus the French, aided by a strong Greek contingent of 23,000 soldiers, arrived in Crimea. This was an initiative of the Greek Prime Minister Eleftherios Venizelos in order to be sitting at the negotiation table. In this expedition, two more future Prime Ministers took part, Nikolaos Plastiras and Georgios Kondilis. However, the expedition was a disaster and the Allied forces soon left. All these years, but especially at the beginning of the 20th century, many Greeks, who were forced to leave Turkey in order to escape oppression, chose Crimea as their second home, increasing the Greek presence in the area. During 1937 and 1950, the Pontic Greeks endured another deportation, this time by the Soviet authorities known as the Greek Operation of NKVD, and the deportation of Soviet Greeks with as many as 50,000 dead Greek civilians. Against all odds, battles or deportations, the Greek diaspora in today's Ukraine continues to number around 90,000 people. At the time of the writing of this video, Greece has pledged to rebuild the maternity house that was destroyed in Mariupol. Don't let 3000 years of Greek presence in Ukraine go in vain. We are Historia Grecia and we will catch you in the next one.